Country Names Hello and welcome back to Earth Basics, the channel to fulfill your needs of useless, but at the same time interestingly fascinating information about our globe. Today we'll be talking about the interesting origins and reasons for country names, which, believe me, is in many cases quite random. Let's start with the letter A, shall we? The name Argentina. Fun fact is that Argentina can be considered the only word in their language not to be Spanish. Let me explain. Argentina originally derives from the Italian language. It means of silver or silver colored. But wait a minute, haven't I heard it somewhere else? I believe I have. Ah, I remember again, it was in a Latin school book, but the word was Argento instead of Argentina. Okay, so let me set this straight quickly. So basically Argentina derives from the Italian word Argentino, which in their place derives from Argento. And they got their language from the Spanish after colonization. Anyway, so Argentina simply means silver or silver colored, but why are they named after silver? Tierra Argentina, land beside the Silvery River, was shortened in the 17th century and named via Argento, which is also thought to be poetic Spanish. Man, it just keeps getting more complicated. Anyway, the Road de la Plata was named by Italian explorer Sebastian Cabot during his journey there in the 1520s after collecting some silver trinkets from the Guarin along the Parana near modern-day Asuncion, Paraguay, which is right here. And there you go. The name of Argentina. Barbados. Barbados, just like Argentina, derives from another country, but in their case, it's Portugal. It comes from as barbadas, which means bearded ones. It is either believed that the indigenous people had beards or from the island's fig trees, which look like this. See the link? No, me neither. The next one is Cameroon, and Cameroon means, well, shrimp, like this little swimming thing. Yes, like this little swimming thing. It is from the singular French Cameroon, which in their place derived from the German Cameroon, again derived from the anglicized Cameroons, which is again derived from the Portuguese Rio de Cameros, which means, drum roll, Shrimp River. It was bestowed in 1472 on account of a massive swarm of the Wuri River's ghost shrimp. So let's summarize this real quick. So Cameroon got its name from France, who got it from Germany, who got it from the English, who had it from Portugal. That makes total sense. Costa Rica. You've probably never thought about it like this, but it simply refers to rich coast, but in Spanish. Look, here's the name of Costa Rica. Put the A in front of the letter S and T and replace the last A with an H and you'll have coast rich. Some claim it was bestowed by Christopher Columbus in 1502 as Costa del Oro, Gold Coast, others by the explorer Gil Gonzalez da Villa. The next one is Dominica. Dominica means Sunday Island, Lordly Island, but it probably never had anything to do with that. On 3 November 1493, at the time of Dominica's discovery, there was no special saint's day on that date, and Columbus's own father had been named Domenego, so it's likely to be named after some person who happened to be the father of Columbus. East Timor. Now, you've probably heard this one already, but I would be hated if I'm not including this one in this name series. East Timor is also called Timor Leste, which derives from the Portuguese back when they had possession over the country. The East in the name refers to the split up between the Portuguese part of Timor and the Dutch western part at the time. The part Timor, however, derives from the Malay Timor, which you would not guess it means East. Yeah, literally. But wait, if Timor means East and the name is East Timor, does this mean their name is actually East East? Yes, that's correct. Don't ask me why. El Salvador. El Salvador is Spanish for the savior, referring to Jesus Christ. It's funny how we discuss these countries often on the channel, but never really see such small things. Just like Costa Rica means rich coast, it's kind of obvious, but we never seem to notice. By the way, did you notice the fact that it is again a Spanish name? It seems it's either Spanish or Portuguese, like there's no other choice. Anyway, let's move on to the next one, which is going to be Iceland. This one is based on a comment on one of my latest community posts with the question, who named Greenland and Iceland, and why? By Eminem Eminem, just want to put this out real quick, great name, anyway, let's answer that question. 
Iceland has always been an interesting name. The name is mostly fascinating or maybe even a bit strange with regard to Greenland. It has had us all wondering why Iceland is called the land of ice while looking green, but Greenland called the land of green when it's icy. I think I speak for us all when we desire to see the names the other way around. But let's leave Greenland first and shift our focus to Iceland in specific. Despite many names only defining their country, Iceland, if this etymology would be correct, was actually far more valuable. It is believed the name Iceland was to scare others away. Let me explain it. Back in time, few people had seen other parts of the world. They didn't travel much to other countries like we do by now. They didn't have access to internet or any source to know how other countries looked like. This uncertainty was used by the people of Iceland. It was a tactical move to call their country Iceland to prevent people from settling on their land. I mean, who wants to live on a cold, harsh, and winter-like island? The simple name could have scared thousands of settlers away, just by the image of snow and ice while few knew it was actually kind of lush and green. However, there is another etymology, which is a bit less complicated. The early explorer and settler Floki Viljarorsson, which is probably not how you pronounce it, gave the island the name after spotting a firth or fjord full of drift ice to the north. Well, that sounds boring. Let's just say it's the first one about the tactical icy move. Yes, that's definitely the reason. Anyway, now that we've discovered Iceland, we can move on to the other side, Greenland. Now you won't believe me when I say this, but the name Greenland, just like Iceland, was named for tactical reasons. However, while Iceland was trying to push settlers away, Greenland was literally trying to get people to the territory. Greenland was named by a Viking named Erik the Red. Historians believe Erik chose to name Greenland as a marketing strategy. The word green promised people from elsewhere in the Nordics they would find lush, green fields waiting for them in the new region. Less did they know that Greenland was icy and not green, while Iceland was green and not icy. So what you're saying is Greenland and Iceland have the exact opposite names, have an exact opposite nature, which doesn't describe their name at all. But despite this, both of them share similarities by lying about how their country actually looks like, with one of them doing it to attract people, while the other is actually trying to push them away? Yes, that's what I'm saying. It's funny to see how Greenland and Iceland are so similar, but at the same time so different from each other. So there you have it, a question wondered by us all on this channel, we finally got the answer. However, I still would like to see the names the other way around. Let me know what you think about it. Moldova. Moldova is a unique story. Unlike other countries, it's based on fictional reasons rather than facts. There is a well-known Romanian folklore about a young guy named Dragos Voda who went on a search for an Orox or a Wissent, trailed by a pack of hounds. Except for a female dog named Molda who constantly raced to the wild animal during the hunting expedition, all of the dogs were fatigued and collapsed. The female dog followed the Wissent into the river and drowned. Dragos finally killed the Wissent and severed its head thanks to Molda. And in honor of his dog's sacrifice, he named the river and the area Moldova. That legend, which is a fictional story, explains the name of the territory and country's etymology, and also explains why the symbol of Moldova is the Wissent head. The symbol is also on their flag, right about here. The Netherlands. The Netherlands literally translates as low countries or lowlands. Both the Dutch nether and its English equivalent nether mean downward, below. The English word is now uncommon, having been largely replaced by lower in English. Nether or nether could simply refer to the geographical features of the area, both flat and downriver. And it is true, the Netherlands is low, even so low that one third of the country would be drowning without the great Dutch water management like dikes, dunes, and other techniques. But that's not what this video is about. Let's move on. The next one is fascinating with again, the Netherlands in the picture. New Zealand. New Zealand was alphabetically the next country after the Netherlands, but funny enough, they're also strongly connected. New Zealand actually got its name from a place in the Netherlands. When Abel Tasman, a Dutch explorer, traveled to New Zealand and called it Staten Land, but later Dutch cartographers used the Latin name Nova Zealandia, followed by the Dutch name New Zealand. 
which Captain James Cook eventually anglicized to New Zealand. Fun, but we still don't know why it's called New Zealand. Well, as cocky as Dutch explorers are, and I can say it because I am one, they called it after a place in the Netherlands, which is called Zeeland. And so because there was already a Zeeland, it was called New Zealand. Now you also know where the Australian state Tasmania got its name from. The Dutch explorer Abel Tasman. My god, these Dutchmen were cocky. Again, I'm Dutch, I can say it. Amazing! What a journey it has been through these country names. Did you enjoy this video? If so, help us a bit by pushing this video into the algorithm with a like. Oh, and also subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. Um, I think that wasn't it, wasn't it? Well, thanks for watching and like we always say, see you in the next of Earth Basics! Earth Basics, signing out.